Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday to you. I hope you had a great week. I hope you had a great Father's Day last week. Um, Genesis chapter 17 today. Genesis 17. Uh, we're going to continue on a little bit. We did Isaiah 54 last week. Um, and I hope that you enjoyed that message. I hope you, you took the time to listen to it. I know it was a little bit longer, uh, but it really encouraged my heart, and I hope it encouraged yours as well. Uh, I think it's very important for us to, to recognize um, how God is not going to destroy the earth. That was his promise. When he gave us the rainbow, uh, that was his promise to us. Today I want to continue on in Genesis 17. I want to talk a little bit about Abram. Um, and God's promise to him and um, I guess I, I kind of want us to um, I'm not really sure exactly where I'm going to go with this yet we're going to do a textual like just go through some of the verses here and, and study them but um, you know we're going to talk about some interesting things I hope it'll be an encouragement to you I'll try to make it a little shorter this week um, but Genesis chapter 17 um, as a quick introduction there was a scene uh, verse number one, it says, And when Abram was ninety uh, years old and nine, so he's ninety-nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God, walk before me and be thou perfect. Um, before we get into, I guess, the, the conversation of this whole uh, circumcision thing, um, it's important for us to get a little bit of background on what's happening in this chapter. So Abraham, and he gets renamed in, in chapter 17, verse 5, he first appears as Abram, and he is um, from uh, Ur, you are Ur of the Chaldees. And God is going to, you know, have a, a purpose for Abraham, of course, and has a plan for him. And immediately we see in Genesis 12, God calling Abraham to go, um, to leave his family, most of it, and go to a land um, that God would show him. And we've heard this preached a million times. It was an act of faith to step out and go. Um, it would have been a scary situation. It would have been hard to do. It's hard for anybody to pick up and leave um, and, and just leave everything that we know and love behind and go do something just because God tells us to do it, right? Uh, we know that God tells us to do it. We know it's going to be the right thing to do. We know it's going to be perfect and awesome and better than we can ever anticipate. But it's still scary. I mean, it's still terrifying to think that we're going to leave everything that we know and love behind um, for something we don't know, for something we don't understand. So, um, you know, uh, he, he's called by God to get up and to go. And, you know, God promises him... He says, Abram, I'm going to make a great nation out of your descendants. So uh, this, is a, this is a covenant. This is a promise that God has made to Abram, Abraham. And, you know, okay, so you want me to go. You're promising me that good things are going to happen. Um, and in verse 2 of chapter 12, he says, I'm going to make your name great. I'm going to bless you and what he means great is, is um, you know, I immediately think that he's going to become famous, right? That's where my brain goes. Like, he's going to have a gazillion followers on Instagram and, and a million likes on Facebook, right? That's not really what he's talking about. He says, listen, your name is going to be large. It's going to be big, great as in size. And if you think about it, when you have a lot of descendants, there's going to be a lot of people with your name uh, running around. That's what he's promising. He said, listen, Abraham, you don't have any children right now. But I'm going to make you a great nation, and you're going to have a great name. No, so he was 75 years old when he left. Um, to put things in perspective, uh, I think that uh, 75. Um, it, I think my mom is is 76 or 77, 78, um, and I can't imagine my mom having to go out and uh, you know take out her own trash, let alone leave everything behind and make a great nation. Okay. Um, I just can't imagine that. So again, this is, now of course, Abraham, I'm being a little silly, but Abraham obviously was not uh, in the same physical condition as my mother. Uh, 75 now was a whole lot different than 75 then, but I still think that it's important to understand that he has been asked to do a, a scary thing, all right? That's what I'm trying to set us up here for. Okay, moving on. 
Um, so he is 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 he he's told he can go, um, and God repeated his promises to Abram in Genesis 13. He had separated from nephew his nephew Lot um, because their land could not support the livestock of both uh, Abraham and and Lot. We see that in 5 through 12 of, of chapter 13. So Lot had taken the lush Jordan Valley to towards Sodom, and Abraham was left with kind of like the seconds. The, the, it wasn't didn't seem like it was so much of a great deal. Um, but God continued to reassure him in 13, 16, and 17. Uh, uh, you know, Abraham, I know it doesn't seem great, but trust me, it's going to be great. Um, and a third time in Genesis 15, God again reassures Abraham. So. Uh, the promises depended on Abraham having an heir, okay? So all this time, Abraham's got to be thinking to himself, well, yeah, you, you, you said you're going to do all these things, but, you know, I don't have any kids of my own. I don't have any children. How are you going to make my name great? And how are you going to make a great nation out of my bloodline? I mean, that's crazy. Um, so, unfortunately, we see that sad situation where Abraham's wife, Sarah, proposes that he... Um, you know, have a child through Hagar, and we know through history uh, the disaster that that turned out to be. Um, and unfortunately, um, you know, there's a lesson to be learned about waiting on God and being patient and not getting ahead of God and, and all these other things. Um, you know, but Ishmael, Ishmael, excuse me, uh, born to Abraham at age 86, we believe. Um, was not that child of promise. It's important for us to understand that he was not uh, that chosen heir. Um, so we're, we're, we're left with an interesting predicament that Abraham is in. And in verse 1 of chapter 17, you know, we're given, you know, we want to talk about this great promise. And it says that when Abraham was 99 years of age, the Lord appeared to him and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. You know, so 13, 13 entire years pass uh, between, uh, excuse me, yeah, between these uh, these instances, and there's no notice from God. Um, in between Genesis 16 and 17, 1, there is the silent period. And different people approach silent periods in the Bible differently. Some people think it's a punishment. Some people think God just didn't have anything to say. Uh, that people need to kind of like live on their own, knowing what God has said, and just you live out what you know to be true. Um, and, and, you know, there really isn't any evidence either way whether this silent experience is, you know, God punishing Abraham for uh, Ishmael or just God didn't have anything to say at this point. I don't know. It's up to you to decide. Um, so, 13 years. It, it's a long time. And. God finally begins to speak. And what he says is so important to us. And yes, this is Old Testament. Yes, it's the first book of the Bible. Yes, it's Genesis. Yes, it's history. But when God comes before Abraham and says to him, I am the almighty God. You know, that El Shaddai, and I hope I say that correctly in Hebrew, um, you know, it's a term that we hear in songs today. And it, it is the idea that God is unlimited in his ability to act for the good of his people. Um, nothing can change or thwart or divert his plans. And this is such an important thing for you and I to understand as believers. Um, it coincides with what we've talked about a little bit last week in, in, in chapter 54 of Isaiah about how... Um, you know, God's everlasting kindness and, and, you know, we sometimes think that um, horrible incidents happen in our life because we do something to make God rain down horrible judgment upon us, right? And I think that this is a reminder to you and me that no matter how much we think we could interfere with God's plans, um, it's not going to change God's plan. You know, God had a plan to make a great nation through Abraham. Abraham did probably, and I understand his frustration, don't misunderstand me, but Abraham did something so goofy 
trying to help God, by the way, that you would think, man, he just blew up God's plan. He just destroyed it. He's bringing in another woman. He's having a child by her. You know, how messed up can that be? I mean, he, he blew it up, right? The plan cannot work now. God says, verse 1, chapter 17, Abraham, I am El Shaddai. I am the Almighty One. My plans are set. All right, so let me close let me close this way. Uh, I've talked enough for this morning. We'll continue on uh, next week, but um, I kind of want to stop here. This is this is um, <laughs> tangent time. Uh, this is the joy of studying the Word of God. Sometimes you just need to stop and savor what it is that you've read. So I wanted to get to you know <laughs> a little bit more on the circumcision thing, but let's focus on the promises of God instead. Um, El Shaddai, the Almighty God. What, what is that going to do in my heart? How does that change my heart, knowing that God has a plan, and there's nothing I can do to change that plan? Um, and when I when I think of of the New Testament scriptures of how um, Christ has paid it all how he sacrificed himself to pay for all of my sin. Um, and all of my sin has been atoned for. And because of what he did for me and for you and the whole world, um, I get to enjoy being part of his family. And I get to claim the promises of God and, and of heaven and of uh, the blessings that come from being a servant of God. and. And all of the just, there's just so much. It's overwhelming at times. And when I think of that, and I think of how I'm going to worship God, how does this change me fundamentally? How does it, how, what does my worship look like when I begin to see God as the Almighty God, the Almighty El Shaddai? How does that change my approach to church, to service, towards, you know, singing hymns in church, uh, singing hymns in my car, singing songs and music under the Lord in, in my car uh, or in my home. You know, how does it change the way I worship God? What, is, what does that look like in, in our life? What, what is, instead of putting God on a shelf somewhere and treating him like an idol where we just go to him when we have a problem, where we only, you know, see him on Sundays and Wednesdays or um, when we're just having a really good up week, when we're just feeling super spiritual that week, you know, what does it look like when we actually take God off the shelf and we make him the center of our life and we do like it told us in 17 about how, you know, we walk perfectly before him. Um, we make him the center of our life and we give him our heart. What does our worship look like when that takes place? What does it look like in your life? What does it look like in the life of your family and your children, your spouse? What does that look like? Um, there's a lot of joy to be had. There's a lot of, of awesome stuff there. And, and I just want you to meditate on that this week. I want you to pray and ask the Lord to help you recognize Him for being the El Shaddai. And to give us a heart to love Him more, to, to walk perfectly before Him, um, and to, to just look for his plan and purpose in our life and to follow that plan and may we be as courageous as abraham was and yes he wasn't immediately obedient but help us to be as courageous as he was to step out on faith when god calls us to do so um and and i pray that this week will be a good week for you i pray that um you'll claim those promises that you'll read the scriptures um and, and just get excited about what god has done in your life um, what he continues to do in your life. I love that the work isn't done. I love that. I think it's so cool. Um, so I, I'm praying for you all this week. I pray for you every week. I love you. I miss you. Um, pray for our country. Um, you know, pray for what's going on. Pray for, for the church. Thank you for tithing. Um, please continue to do so. You can do so online. Um, opendoorchurch.org. Um, click on Give. And uh, there's easy instructions to follow there. It's really simple to use. 
Um, thank you for allowing me to do these videos and work from home, work from my office. Um, it's a blessing. Um, I miss you. Um, I hope to see you soon, but God's got a plan for this too. He does. And, you know, I think we as a church, we're going to have to learn to adapt a little bit. And I think we are, and that's good. Um, and I will tell you, I've been seeing some, I, I know I need to stop talking, but I've been, I just want to share this with you. I'm sorry. I love you. Uh, I just want to share my heart with you. I don't get to share with you as often as I like anymore. Um, it's neat when I, I'm driving either here to work or to church or, you know, out and about visiting people or just driving to the store or whatever. Um, I try to, I'm trying to stay at home as much as I can, but, um, it's interesting when I go out and about, I see something that I personally haven't seen in a long time. Um, now, of course, this is just my experience. It doesn't represent what's going on in the country as a whole or the world as, as a whole. But, um, you know, my experience lately, and maybe it's because I've got a little more free time, but when I drive around right now, I'm seeing more families being together. I'm seeing dads in the yards with their children. I'm seeing moms and dads and families having activities in their own homes, in their front yards, in their backyards. I see dads mowing along with their kids. I saw a guy who was a professional landscaper the other day. Uh, he pulled into somebody's driveway as I was driving uh, down the road. And I noticed on the trailer, his son, which had to be Caleb Muller's age, maybe he actually probably more like Noah Muller's age, uh, maybe not, uh, I, I, I'm gonna get myself in trouble if I tell you how old I think Noah is. Uh, at any rate, jumping on a zero turn mower and taking it off the back of this truck and he was going to go help his dad at his landscaping job. Um, yeah, it's probably illegal labor, but man, it blessed my heart to see a father and son doing that. And, you know, like I said, maybe it's just because I didn't have as much free time before and I wasn't out and about. Um, I was always in this office, but I don't know. There might be some good things that are happening from quarantine and, and all of that. And I think that the, the emphasis on the family has been... Uh, reestablished. I think that we don't get to do some of the hobbies we used to do anymore. We're not out and about. We're not as busy as we were before. Um, and I think there's some positives that come out of that. So um, God's got a plan. He's got a purpose behind this. Um, and uh, I just hope that whatever that plan is, that we will be faithful to walk before him with a heart that's full of joy, full of trust, full of faith, hoping for, for the best, looking for him, looking for the soon return of Jesus Christ, knowing that we still have a message to get out, knowing that um, while things have slowed down, our ministry shouldn't, um, knowing that things have, have changed doesn't mean that the light of the gospel goes out, it just means that it shines a little differently. Um, pray and ask the Lord, the Almighty God, the El Shaddai God, what does my ministry look like now that things have changed a little bit. Just something to think about. Um, I love you. I'm thankful for you. I'm praying for you. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Have a great Sunday. Day in the Lord. Talk to you soon.